You do not have to be a computer master or a pro editor to start a podcast. You just need to have a good idea, a story to tell, something to teach, or love having conversations. As long as you fall into one of those categories, you can start a podcast. In this video, I'm going to walk you through exactly step-by-step -step how to record and edit your podcast in the easiest way possible. This is the ultimate beginner's guide designed to turn that idea that you have into an actual podcast that people wanna to listen to. Let's dive in. A few years ago, I started this podcast called Talking 20, and it's one of the most rewarding projects I've ever worked on. But it started out as just an idea when I was driving. I had no idea how to actually start a podcast. So I spent literally all my spare time, and it was peak COVID, so you know that means I had a lot of hours, scouring the internet and researching the exact steps from taking an idea and turning it into a successful, well-produced podcast that people actually wanna to listen to. And now, here I am, teaching people like you how to start a podcast. So all this goes to say, you are in good hands. This video is designed for you to pause when needed and follow along step by step. So save the video and take as long as you need. Before you get started on recording your podcast, you'll want to have these five things ready first. You'll need a podcast name, a podcast cover image, podcast intro music if you want it, a podcast intro video if you're doing a video podcast. So this would just be a little animation over top of your intro music, similar to this. You'll also need your script or outline for the episode that you are recording. I've made step-by-step -step videos for creating each of these things. I've put those videos together in a playlist and I'm going to link that right above here. So if you don't have that stuff ready, head to these videos first and then come back to this one. The first thing that we're going to talk about is equipment. Here's a quick breakdown of the budget-friendly setup that I recommend, and all of these are linked in the description, so you can just click and buy. If you want more of a breakdown for different setups, either for free or maybe you have a higher budget, I will link a video above here that will dive a bit deeper. You'll need a USB microphone. A great one for this is the ATR2100X. This mic comes with a stand, but you'll also need a windscreen. That's that little foamy bit that goes over the mic and it helps to eliminate any plosives. Those are those little pops you hear when you say letters like P and B. You'll need a camera if you wanna capture video as well, which I do recommend because this will put a face behind the voice and give you content to repurpose after into things like social media clips. You don't need to go out and buy anything crazy. You can use your phone. I'll show you how, don't worry. If you're going to use your phone as a camera, you will need a phone tripod or a phone mount like this one that I have that will allow your phone to attach to the top of your laptop like an external webcam. You'll need a light. You can sit in front of a window for free lighting, or you can get a ring light like this. This video is going to touch on how to record your podcast with someone else who is in another location. Recording a podcast with more than one person in the same room is not beginner friendly. Trust me, I've tried it and it took me forever to learn. Start remote and as you get the hang of things, you can consider an in-person setup. We have videos on the channel that will help you with that as well. So if you are recording your podcast with someone else over the web, like we're gonna talk about, you will need a pair of headphones. You can use any headphones lying around the house, but make sure that they have a wire, not wireless ones like AirPods. Lastly, you'll need a way to record and edit. Riverside.fm is by far the easiest way to record and edit a podcast. It's the platform that I used when I started and still use to date, and it makes the process so straightforward. This is a website designed for podcasting that will allow you to record high quality audio and video easily using your computer or even your phone. And then you can edit that recording with a beginner friendly editor all online. We're going to go through this process on a computer because this will give you the most functionality of the platform. Riverside has a very generous free plan so you can get started for free. But as you start creating more episodes, you're gonna wanna upgrade to either the standard or the pro plan for more features which you can purchase as a monthly or annual subscription. Once you have your equipment, you're ready to record. Head to Riverside and log into your new account. This is what you'll see. The first thing that you want to do is create a new studio. Think of this as a room, but online. You can have multiple rooms or studios for different types of content or different podcasts. You can see I have a bunch of studios on the side here. To create a new studio, press this plus button, and here you can name your studio. 
let's name it your podcast name. And here you can choose if you want to record only audio. I recommend recording video either way. You can always change it to an audio podcast in the editing phase. But at least if you record the video, then you have that option for a video podcast. Set the language that you'll be speaking in the studio. And if you want to schedule this recording for a later date, you can do that here as well. Press create. So now if you have someone else joining you for the recording, head to plan recording, invite to record. You can either send them this link or you can invite them directly by email. If you do this, Riverside will send them an email with a link to the studio and best practices. I will also link a video above for you that you can send to your guests where I will walk them through how to set up for a recording on Riverside. The guest can click this link and join from their computer, phone, or even their tablet. When you're ready to start recording, select go to studio. On this page, you can select the equipment that you'd like to use. So from the drop down menu, you can select your microphone and you can also select your mobile camera. Set up as quick and easy, you would just scan this QR code with your mobile phone and your phone will be set up as an external webcam for your computer. If you have any trouble setting that up, I'm going to link a video above for you that will help walk you through it. Select your headphones here if you will be using headphones. Write your name right here. Make sure to select whether you are or are not using headphones and join the studio. This is your new podcast studio. If you are a beginner, this may look a little overwhelming, but don't worry, I'm going to walk you through only the things that you need to know. When you're feeling more comfortable, you can head to our channel and find out about more features that you can use. So again, within the studio right here, you can invite anybody to your recording. When they join, they'll show up in this box beside you. It will look like this. If you're recording solo, you can exit out of that. Now you'll see over on the side here, when you speak, you will have an audio meter. This is measuring how loud your mic is. You wanna keep this in the green range. It can hit the yellow, but you don't want to hit the red range. Try to keep your mouth about two to three inches away from your mic. Here, you can turn off your video if you'd like to do an audio only podcast. But again, I recommend recording video. You can always change it to audio later. Down here on the bottom, you will see the script feature. So paste your episode script or your episode outline here to help yourself stay on track throughout the recording. You can change the sizing and even the size of the window to make it more comfortable for you. Okay, you're ready to record. So simply just press this record button at the bottom here. The platform will count down and start your episode whenever you're ready. If you mess up, don't worry about it. You'll be able to edit out any mistakes in post-production. But if you do mess up in the middle of the sentence, make sure to go back to the beginning of the sentence, not the word that you messed up on. Otherwise, the flow of the sentence will sound kind of funny and any editing will be noticeable for your listeners. There will be a lot of mistakes during the beginning of recording. It happens to all of us. It really just takes practice. Hey everyone, welcome back to the podcast. Today we're diving into a topic that's been buzzing around the content creation community. Why video podcasts are better than audio podcasts in this day and age. Trust me, this isn't just a trend. There's some real meat to this conversation. A few minutes later. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. If you found this helpful, don't forget to subscribe and share it with your friends. Until next time, keep creating. Before you end the recording of your podcast, make sure to have a call to action for your audience. Something like subscribe to this podcast on your favorite streaming platform. When you're done recording, press stop at the bottom here. You'll see this recording uploading to the cloud. This means that this video is going to take up no space on your computer. It all exists in the cloud. You'll always have access to the raw files and the edited video files within your Riverside account. You want to make sure that everyone, both you and your guest, stays on this page until the recording is fully uploaded. This usually doesn't take very long, but it does depend on your internet speed. But if somebody jumps off the page too early and you get an upload error, don't freak out. Riverside will give you a link that either you can go to or your guest can go to, and it will continue uploading that recording. And of course, if you have any issues, just reach out to Riverside support. Select view recordings. This is the page that has all of the content that you've recorded within each studio. Like for example, if I go into my live stream studio, you can see I have my live stream recordings here. Select the recording that you'd like to edit and you'll be brought to this page. If you scroll down, you'll see that you can download files for each participant of the episode. You can download just the audio as well as the combined audio and video. This is necessary if you're editing on an external platform like Adobe Premiere or Adobe Audition or Final Cut Pro. What you wanna do is head up to this edit button. 
create new edit. This is the Riverside editor. It may look like a lot, but don't worry. I'm going to show you only the things that you need to know. I'm going to break down editing a podcast episode into seven simple steps. Step number one, remove pauses and filler words. Maybe your guest took a little bit of time to think about their answer to a question before answering it. Or maybe you took a couple pauses throughout the recording. Head up to this AI producer button, set pace, and now you can use this slider to take out as much or as little silence as you'd like. For a podcast episode, I recommend either the balanced option or the natural option to keep that authenticity. This is gonna leave in some pauses. Select apply. Now when you look down here on the timeline, you'll see silences removed from the recording. Back in AI producer, head to smooth speech. This is going to take out any filler words that you use like um and ah and any unwanted sounds. So let's say you hit your mic in the middle of recording. Smooth speech will delete that. So select apply. You can see here that all of the filler words were removed. Okay, your episode is already sounding 10 times better and it only took a couple clicks. Step number two is to edit out your mistakes. You'll see that your video was transcribed. You'll see that transcription over on the side here. You're going to be able to edit the content of your recording through this transcription. So you'll see here before I got into the actual episode that I recorded, I was giving you guys a little bit of guidance. So I'm going to delete that. So I'm just going to highlight everything that I want deleted and I'm going to press delete. You'll see that that part was deleted and it's reflected here on the timeline. My episode now starts right where I want it to. If you need to make any adjustments to the timing of the cut, you can use this zoom toggle here to zoom in, and then you can slide along the timeline to take out any parts that you'd like. So read through your transcript and delete anything that you want to take out. Now during this process, keep your eye open for any valuable tidbits of information or quotes. This will help speed up the next step. Step number three is to create an intro quote. Something that many podcasts do is take a snippet of valuable information from the episode and put it at the very beginning of the episode to hook in the listener and show them what's to come. If this is something that you wanna do, here's how. When you're going through your transcript, find a part of your episode that is, let's say, less than 20 seconds long. You want this to be something that can be a standalone quote. For example, in this episode, I talked about a video podcasting fact. And I think that this is a valuable piece of information that will make people want to listen to hear more. So I'm going to find that quote in the transcript by using this search bar up here. I'm going to search a part of what I said. So I know I said fact, and you'll see that Riverside navigates to exactly where you said whatever you searched for. You're going to highlight what you'd like to use as your intro quote. Select these three dots and select duplicate. You'll see that that quote was duplicated right underneath. Now we need to move that quote to the beginning of the episode. So put your cursor on the first word and you'll see that you'll be brought to that section on the timeline. I'm going to zoom out. And when you hover your cursor over that section on the timeline, you'll see these crisscross arrows. When you put your cursor over that, you'll have the option to click and drag that section all the way to the beginning of the episode. Easy peasy. Step four, add your intro music or your intro video. Click in between the first two sections on the timeline. So in between that intro quote and your episode's introduction, select uploads. Now you'll see this upload function pop up. Upload your intro music or your intro video. Select it and it will be inserted in between your intro quote and the real start of your episode. Now, something that you may want is the ability to fade in and out of your intro music or add your intro music underneath your first quote. This can be done if you upgrade to the standard or pro plan. If you have a paid version, you will see this music icon here and you'll have access to stock audio. You will also have the option to add this to the timeline underneath the podcast. That's just one example of an added feature that you'll get if you upgrade, but we're working on the free plan here, so let's keep going with the tools that we have access to. So now your episode should go intro quote, intro video, right into the episode. Let's see. A study by Wistia found that people spend on average 2.6 times more time on pages with video than without. This means that people are more likely to stick around and engage with their content longer if it's in video format. So if someone's thinking about starting a podcast today, they should definitely consider video. The landscape is evolving and video podcasts are at the forefront of that change. 
Hey everyone, welcome back to the podcast. Today we're diving into a hot topic that's been buzzing around the content creation community, why video podcasts are better than audio podcasts in this day and age. Trust me, this isn't just a trend. There's some real meat to this conversation. Okay, cool. Your episode is done. So this is the end of the steps if you have an audio-only podcast. You would head up to export, and you can export your audio in either WAV or MP3. If you recorded a video podcast but only want to export the audio, you'll have the option to do so here as well. At this point, if you've noticed any background noise in your episode, like maybe where you were recording wasn't completely soundproof, you'll have the option to remove background noise. If you had more than one person in the recording and you notice that one speaker is a lot louder than the other, or maybe your intro music is a lot louder than your microphone, you can use this normalize audio feature to make the audio of every track level. You would simply press export audio and you'll be able to get that exported audio on your dashboard. If you are making a video podcast, let's move on to step five, add branding. If you head up to this brand button, and you can either add a logo to your video. So if you have a podcast logo, you can use that, or you can just upload your podcast cover image, and then you can resize it and choose where you'd like it to be on the screen. This image will be on screen throughout your entire video. You can also add a background. You'll see here there are some options to choose from, or you can choose a color. This will turn into a frame around your video. Step six, add captions. Something else that you might want to do is add dynamic captions. This is going to help with accessibility, branding, and engaging your audience more. If you head to this captions button, you'll see that you have a bunch of caption options to choose from. Select whatever one you'd like, and you can customize the style, the font, the size, the animation style, and even the colors to match your branding. You can move these captions around the screen as well. Now, if a word was mistranscribed, just head over to that word within the transcript, highlight over it, select correct, change the word, and select correct. Or you can select correct everywhere. Like say your name was mistranscribed and you want anytime you say your name in the episode to be transcribed correctly, you can correct that everywhere. You'll see along the side here, you also have the option to add text and images throughout the episode. Step number seven is to export. Head up to export, and on the free plan, you can export this video in 720p. If you wanna have the ability to export in up to 4K, then you'll need to upgrade. Again, you'll have the option to remove background noise and normalize audio levels. And once you export the video, you can go to your exports, and you'll see that video exporting here. When it's done, you'll get a notification. There you go, how easy was that? seven simple steps to editing a podcast. Now you can head into that export by clicking it and you can preview it, download it to upload to your hosting provider, or you can directly publish it with Riverside's Spotify for Podcasters integration. This is a free hosting site that will allow you to get your video podcast to places like Spotify and Apple Podcasts. That would be your next step. And don't worry, I have a video on that, so I will link it above for you to watch next. What I want you to do is press the copy button on the export page to copy the link to your first edited podcast episode and paste that link in the comments here so other people can take a look and see some examples of what can be done. And if you want advice on your first episode, just let me know and I can take a quick peek and give you a couple pointers for your next one. You did it. You successfully recorded and edited your first podcast episode in high quality all using one platform. It's really not as daunting as it's made out to be. With a platform like Riverside, you can have a podcast that people actually wanna to listen to up and running in no time. If you liked this video, make sure to hit that thumbs up button to let me know. And subscribe to our channel for a ton more tips, tricks, and tutorials on podcasting and high quality content creation. We post new videos every week designed to help you crush your content creation goals. So press that bell icon so you never miss a video release. Now, if you're feeling like you want a little more guidance on the planning phase of starting a podcast, I'm going to link a video here that will help you out. And if you wanna learn more about Riverside and what you can do with it, I will leave a playlist of videos here for you to binge as well. Thanks for hanging out with me. My name is Bridget O'Rourke and I'll see you next week.